tell you there's a difference now than leaving a job back then. Back then, you had players that were there to play for you, to be with you, to help groom them to get ready for what their future was. And if you left, they were stuck there. They couldn't leave. They had to play for whoever the coach was. And John got mad at me. I said, I'm not leaving these kids. And it was Derrick Rose, Antonio Anderson, Chris Douglas Roberts, Joey Dorsey, Robert Dozier, Sean Taggart. I mean, we had a great group. But it wasn't about winning and losing. It was about leaving them. It happened to be at uh, Massachusetts with Marcus Camby. We lost to Eddie Sutton's Oklahoma State team in big country in the Elite Eight. He said, I'm going to stay, coach. I'm not ready. And I said, well, then I'm going to stay with you. There were a couple things that were happening for me. The next year, we go to the Final Four, lose to a Kentucky team. I think we got screwed, but that's another story. <laughs> and he says, I'm going to do this. And I went and said, you know what? I'm going to go too. And I went to the Nets. You know who I got to coach at the Nets? Joe Klein. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, he got me fired. But, <laughs> but they, they were saying you traded for Joe Klein. No, he was in the trade. But I got to tell you one story, so, and Joe will tell you this is true. So I trade for him. He walks into my office in the arena. We're getting ready to play a game. He says, uh, Coach, I'm Joe Klein. You just traded for me. I said, Joe, I don't have time to talk to you, so I'll see you after the game. He said, should I put a uniform on? And I said, yeah, but you're not going to get in. But go ahead, warm up and be around. You know what happens. My center gets in foul trouble, another kid gets hurt. I look at Joe, he looks at me, I look at Joe, he looks at me. And I said, go in, we'll run floppy. Anybody that ever, Joe Johnson's here, you know, Ron, you know what floppy is. That's universal, anybody can do it. Joe struggled with it, but anybody can do it. <laughs> so, I said, go in. And I could tell you other stories, but he walked by me and stopped and turned back and said, I'm Joe Klein, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> and then went in the game. And I had an absolute, he and I have been friends since that time. He got me fired, but it was good <laughs> because I could get back to what I do best. I'm sorry, Joe, I had to do that. <laughs> it must have been hard to leave Kentucky. What was that like? It was, I mean, we'd been there 15 years, folks. 15 years. And great times, great achievements. 40 players to the NBA, 30 kids graduated. 30 kids graduated, I mean. Um, I love that state, I love the governor. The people are the salt of the earth. They're generous, they're kind, they grew up kind of like we did. They grew up like we did. And my wife and I, Ellen, where are you, Ellen? Stand up. There you are. Stand up and you can see my wife. Now, you, from this point on, she is the princess. That's what she is. She's a princess. She, uh, I got it, I'm off point here, but she makes brownies at every birthday. She wants the players at the house all the time. If they're not there, why aren't they here? And it's been that way from UMass to Memphis. Joe, did anybody come to the house in the Nets? No. Yeah. <laughs> but, and in Kentucky. And she becomes their mom away from home. So she's a great lady, great coach's wife. She's the best. And, and I got my son here, Brad. Brad played for me for three years at Kentucky, he graduated, and he put his name in the portal. So he was the first coach's son that said, I'm out. 
<laughs> and he went and played at Detroit for Mike Davis and had a terrific career and has done good and uh, was at Vanderbilt with uh, Jerry Stackhouse last year and did a great job of coaching. Um, but Kentucky's the bluest of blue. There's only a few schools like that, and I hate to tell you, Arkansas is one of them. It is. But I, all, I, all I can tell you, we loved our time there. We gave every ounce of everything we had to that job that stayed in that school. So I walk away sad, but knowing no regrets. We left nothing on the table. There's not a whole lot more we could have tried to do. If you look around, that's all right, you can applaud, go ahead. Obviously, there are a lot of Razorback fans. You look around the building and see that. What do you know about Arkansas? What, what, what's attracted you to this place? Well, it started with Coach Broyles. I mean, who he was, what he stood for. Um, when I met him, I was kind of intimidated when I met him. And then, is Marsha Cohn here? Is she here? Where's Marsha? All right, there's Marsha. Her husband, David Cohen, <laughs> ran a golf tournament up in Forest City, and coach would play in it. He had the biggest legs and could hit a golf ball, even later in his life would hit the, I'm like, well, how old is he hitting the ball that far? But he was the one that met with me and talked to me, and um, so it started there. I mean, I would tell you, Coach Sutton, for some reason, kind of took me under his wing, and I have no idea. I just saw Steven, um, and we talked about it. I was like the last person to talk to him before he passed away. And I wanted to help him in the Hall of Fame earlier than they did, but he did get to hear that he was inducted in the Hall of Fame before he passed, which was a great thing. I see, I see Ron Brewer, Sidney Moncrief, you have, you know, Marvin Delft. He did it with Arkansas players. And how he did it in Barnhill, I have no idea. <laughs> but what he did here was the basis of what this became. And then Coach Richardson, he and I talked this morning. And Hunter will tell you, and John, I, one thing I ask, I want to know what Coach Richardson thinks of me taking this job. I need to know. And he says... And he and I talked today. Um, I'm going to send out to all of you a poster that's in my home office on the wall. I forgot it was there. It was behind me. And one of my staff said, look at that. Was, any, was anyone here at the 1994 game in Springfield, the Hall of Fame game? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was UMass in Arkansas the year after they won the national title. That year they went to the championship game. It's a poster of Coach Richardson. He looked at it. He said, that don't look like me. It does look like him. He's, he's, he's in his seat looking mean. Have me screaming. You have Corliss in it. Lou Rowe. What was the score of that game, by the way? A lot to a little. <laughs> okay. It was 114 to like 80, but that's all right. <laughs> It was in Springfield. But I think Corey Beck's here. Where's Corey? Corey played on that team. Um, Scotty Thurman. You know, the shots he made. I mean, come on. And it wasn't just who he coached. It's how he coached and how they changed the game to that point of we're coming after you 40 minutes of hell, this is what we're doing. And the excitement in this building, it was hard to win a game if you were an opponent in here because you knew they're coming at you, teeth and feet, here they come. Um, I will tell you that he challenged his kids, but Corey, you gotta say, but he cared. He challenged them, but he cared. Did he hold you accountable? He held you accountable twice, right? Like once in the same time, never then but he cared about him. 
And in my memory of all that, Muss here, five years. You gotta know, Muss did a heck of a job here now. <laughs> Two and lead eights. He got this thing back on track, the Sweet 16. And again, you know, the, the opportunity to follow all that. And again, you could say, well, rebuild. Yeah, there may not be a roster. I gotta put a roster together. No, you're laughing, that's not funny. I just, I just met with the team. There were three guys in there. And they were in the portal. So we got, we got work to do. And, and the only thing that I want to tell you is I'm not that guy that has a magic wand. That's not who I am. I'm the grinder that comes every day. And when you watch my team at the beginning of the year to the end, you say, wow, they got better. Individual players got better. They become a better team to put them in the best position. So, Finally, we've, we've watched you coach. We've watched your teams play. Tell us about you. Tell us about Coach Cal away from all this. Well, as a player, I was small, but I was slow. So, <laughs> um, I'm a gatherer. I'm, you know, I see uh, Dakari's brother down there. How's mom doing? If you tell her I asked for her, okay? Um, I bring people together. It's what I've always tried to do. Um, we get this thing going and we get this thing done. I want thousands of people to say, without me, this doesn't happen. Thousands. Not just one, two, five, not my staff. It was everybody came together and say, without me, none of this happens. I look at trying to create that love affair. A love affair between this program and this campus, this program, in this state, I know this program's important to the state. All these programs are important to the state. And uh, I got to tell you, so you understand, my parents, my dad worked in the mill in Western PA, and then he was a baggage handler. Worked till the age of 70, still looking strong at 91. If he's thrown, you know. My mom worked in the cafeteria at the junior high school. She had the white suit and sold the ice cream. We grew up Friday to Friday. You guys know what Friday, some of you young people don't know what Friday to Friday is. You're getting paycheck and you're making it till the next Friday. Thursday is a tough day. It's how I grew up, but you know what? No credit cards, layaway, all the stuff. I wouldn't want to grow up any other way. You knew you had to work or you did not eat. And I say I'm a grinder, um, that's what I am. I, look, I told my son today, I don't know why you look at, I, I'm telling you, my dad was a baggage handler, my mom worked there, I wasn't a great player. Please, I am just, my friends call me Johnny, Johnny Calipari. I'm not that guy that, you know, it's me bringing everybody together, bringing a staff together, gathering people. Getting a team to understand how you have to work. You ready for this? Together. Not work by yourself. You do it together. And, and then having a dream and a burning desire to compete for championships. Why am I here? That's why I'm here. And, and let me just say one, one more thing. Um, I'm always going to be a player's first coach. I'm sorry. It's about the players. I know for some reason, people think you can't really be a coach that wants to win if you're about the players. And he, no, you can do both. 
You can be, every decision I will make will be, are, is this the best decision for these guys? Not me as a staff, not, is it the best decision for them? When we're doing things, how we're doing things. You saw my team this year, we played totally different. Why? It was the best way for that team to play. We couldn't guard as well as we needed to, but we could really score. But it was how they had to play. And all I can tell you is I won't change that. It does change recruiting because of this transfer portal. You can't have as many freshmen as you usually have. You have your group of freshmen, you have a group of returning players, and you have a couple transfers that can impact it. Sometimes they're the, the alpha dog, that guy coming in. But even those guys would come here for one reason. How do you make me better, coach? I want to go to the next level. Can you help me? If I see a player that I don't think I can help, I'm being honest, I probably won't. Not that he's not a good player. I don't want to use some young man and say, yeah, you're going to set screens and dive on the floor. No. How do I help him get better? That is what my job is, to prepare them for life after basketball, to tell them how they create joy in their life. Do something for somebody else, and you'll figure out how you create joy in your life. The one thing Coach Riley, Pat Riley said to me, the best compliment, Cal, I can give you is your team, your players come in this league and they're all good teammates. Think about that. For me as a coach, that was the best compliment I can get. Yeah, they're in that league, they're getting second deals, they're doing all this stuff, yet they're great teammates. That's what I want to have, the base of what we're doing here, the culture of what we're trying to do here. Ladies and gentlemen, he's our coach now, Coach John Calipari. <laughs> coach, come on up. I want to go down and say hello to the coaches real quick. I hope they didn't do this to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Thanks. And you won. What was that score today? All right. Uh, you've been listening to Coach John Calipari. It's now official. Name, uh, been named the uh, Arkansas head basketball coach. And for the last uh, 30 or 40 minutes, as eloquently as he can. And now we know why. Yes. He is a very good speaker, uh, welcoming himself to the Razorback program and talked about the difficulties it was and the hardship, or not the hardship, Ladies but at least the difficulty it, up, it was of, uh, of leaving Kentucky and coming to Arkansas. So what's going to happen He's next is, um, if we can Angeles turn them down just a bit, uh, if, uh, what's going to happen next is he's going to make his way to the media room there inside Bud Walton Arena, and he will have a news conference with all of the reporters that cover Razorback Sports, and we're going to try to bring that to you as much as we can before the top of the hour, if not past the top of the hour, it'll go to our 5 Plus app. Yeah, so we'll be streaming on 5 Plus. That is free to download on any smart TV you have if you want to watch that. We, will, of course, will have the highlights from that press conference at 10. And by the way, Wheel of Fortune is airing at 1237 tonight. So you can DVR it if you want to see it. We're airing that for you again, 1237 tonight. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.